Now, the annual Perseid meteor shower is set to reach its peak in the coming days and if the skies are clear, we'll provide stargazers with some stunning sights. Yeah, it's always spectacular, especially uh, so this year. It's coinciding with a new moon, and that makes viewing conditions apparently particularly favourable. So what can we expect, and what's the best way to get a good look? Let's talk to Dr Martin Archer, a space physicist from Queen Mary University. Good morning to morning. you. So how do we go about looking for them? Well, what you need to do is just look into the sky, get as much of the sky in as possible. Now, they're going to be coming around just above the constellation of Perseus. So if you've got one of those astronomy apps on your phone, you'll be able to find it like that. And then lean back, take as much of that in as possible. Maybe take a blanket with you, because I imagine it's a bit cold past 11 o'clock when it's going to be best to have a look. And then hopefully you'll be able to see up to 100 meteors an hour. Right. Why does the new moon make it better to see? Well, it just means there's going to be less light in the sky. So that that's, doesn't happen every time. It's not been since 2007 that this has been the case. So you really want as much, uh, as, as little light as possible. So try and get out to the countryside, get away from the light pollution of cities. That will make it even better. But the new moon offers great conditions if the clouds stay away. So all you need is basically darkness. It doesn't need to be a particular time at night. Well, they'll be happening all the time, but... The darkest part of the night, so from 11 past midnight, will be the best. And this happens every year. That's right, yes. yeah. We've talked about it a number of times before, but it always seems like a brand new novelty for us. Wow, they're beautiful things to behold, and so if, if you know when they're coming, then they're a great thing to see. The reason why it happens every year is because what these things actually are are very small bits of ice and dust, about the size of a pea down to the size of a grain of sand, that have been left in the, in the wake, in the trail of Comet Swift Tuttle. So, OK, great to do if you've got one of those apps on your phone, but before we had apps on our phone, how would you have spotted this just with the naked eye. Is there any other more basic way you can find it in the sky? Well, yeah, you can just look towards the northeasterly direction. If you just face northeast, lean back, try and get as much of that night sky into your eyes as possible, and you should be seeing one every few minutes, if conditions are good. Ah, one every few minutes. So it's not like you're going to get a whole cluster of them at the same time. You've, no, you've no. got to be lucky. Well, no, I, I think they should be, as long as the conditions are good, you'll definitely spot them. And as long as, long as you're tr making sure you're seeing a lot of that night sky, you'll definitely spot a lot of them. And that does add up to about 100 an hour. Yeah. Are they... I was going to say, how big are they? <laughs> Which is a bit Not that dark. big. <laughs> but how big are they? In, in well, the actual, seems... the actual material that's, that's coming into contact with the Earth's atmosphere is, like I say, smaller than the size of a pea. So they're absolutely tiny, but they're travelling so fast. They're going at 60 kilometres a second. Yeah. And so what's happening is the air around them is heating up to try and slow them down and burning them up in the process. So you're just seeing the really hot air that's around these so when, tiny little bits of ice and dust. When you see them in the, in the sky, are they the sort of same size as a sort of small, small helicopter, very, very high up, or what will you see with your eye? Well, I, I mean, well, you can you can see from the pictures there. I mean, you're going to see something like that. So if you imagine all those dots there are just the normal stars. Mm. They are they are small, but they'll be they'll be great little trails that you'll see. So what you'll see... They'll just be popping. You'll just see them there, and then there might be one there. <laughs> and what you're seeing is them kind of exploding. I get, that's the end of them, well, they're burning up. They're yeah. burning up. They're yeah. burning up. So that these things are not going to be hitting the ground and causing any problems whatsoever, and they're absolutely tiny. So mm. there's, no, there's no worry about that. They're, they're literally just these tiny little bits of ice and or dust that are just burning up in the sky and causing a great show. How much longer can we see them for? Uh, well, the height will be well, kind of Wednesday and Thursday night, but you should be able to see them for about the next month, but this week's the week to really check them oh. out. Brilliant. Although, Thanks didn't Carol say it was going to be quite rainy? And... Mm. Fingers crossed. All yeah. right. <laughs> Martin, thanks very much. Thank you. Now, the Hollywood actor Danny Houston will be with us very shortly. First, here's a last quick uh, look at the headline.